right, so the plunge cut is made, which is now set up the hinge. They, that hinge is, is what's going to hold this wood on the way down. Uh, you know, on these big trees, the teaching says 10% of diameter of breast height uh, should be the width of the hinge, but you know, what that, what's that going to be, four inches or something? I think four inches is probably too big a hinge to allow the flexibility we'd like. I have this set at three, two and a half to three inches, something like that. I think that should work. It's always a tough call to exactly how to cut these big tulips. You know, tulip is notorious for, for going where gravity wants it to go much more so than where it's hinged. Fortunately, uh, the tree only has a very slight bit of side lean. It's mostly got back lean. We've got a straight pull line directly over the, uh, the directly to uh, the, the intended fall. So I'm hoping all goes well, and uh, we're just going to set up a little tension on that on that uh, skid loader, and I'll come in from with a back release cut. It should pop and go. I'm going to uh, ask to put a little more tension on this, and then I'm going to come in with. With, with a with a back cut, which is a back release cut. So the, the hinge has already been established. I cut the notch out, I have a back cut up to the hinge. Now there's a holding strap on the back of the tree. As soon as the saw gets through there, that tree is just going to pop and go. Yeah. So what I want you to do, you don't have to look away for my signal. Just get this, you're going to set this yeah. tension up the way I like it. And then as soon as you see the tree starting to move, just gas it. Yeah. Okay? And This is a case of better safe than sorry, you know. I said I wanted to favor the far side, away from the patio of that uh, padding log. I guess we missed it by six inches. Well, we missed the log by six inches, but we missed the center of the log by three feet or something. In any case, all's well, it ends well. The tree's on the ground, he's got a skid loader, got a little dirt on the bottom, a little grass to fix. And, you know, I, when, that my, on the, my, uh, my, my back release cut on the, the high side was a little bit low. So it was, a, it was about this much wood that had to break. And I, I heard it crack, and then the, 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 the log just stalled there, and that's when I stood back and waved you on. Did you see it move or yeah, not? Yeah, yeah, it just pulled right in, right, right in. So you, you saw that, what, the, the, the tension of the line started yeah, to have yeah, it move? Yeah, exactly. And then, you, but you seemed like you hesitated before you hit the gas, and I had to wave you like, go, go, go. What happened? No, man, I was just watching it. I mean, it oh. wasn't going. You said when it goes for it, it was just sitting oh. there. So. Okay, I got you. So, yeah, as soon as it moves in the future, as soon as it moves, it can't move until that back strap breaks. When that back strap breaks, you know, I mean, fortunately that tree was straight enough that it just stood in the air there, but you want to get it moving in the future. All right, all right. It, was a, it was a fine job. I mean, it all worked out. Trip. Let's go. Yeah, we're doing <laughs> on the second. Thank you. All right. All right, so this is where the knot of uh, the, the, uh, the notch was made, and so these fibers here are, call, are called, is, is what comprise the hinge, it's also called holding wood. You can see there's a couple of deep uh, fibers that got pulled out right here and here. This was on the, uh, the hinge was a little wider on this side, which because that was, that, the house was over there on that side. And uh, this back cut, this, uh, this, this plunge cut for the back release was actually a little bit low. I don't like them to be quite so low. Oh, actually, all right. You know what? That didn't really have that much of an effect because this was the this was the top. This was the first cut I plunged in over here, right? So those fibers right to here just went over, and so it was right from here. Still, this still this plunge was a little bit low. I have a tendency still I don't plunge that often to to, to for that tip to dive down a little bit. But in any case, uh, so this was my first plunge in here, my second plunge in here. All right. Uh, and, and so this whole section of wood was, uh, was cut here, and then my back release cuts came, started you know, on this side, and then on this side, this, this bar, I guess the bar wasn't cutting straight. It started, it started dipping down. This was the area where you can see that's probably six inches uh, of, of fibers that had to tear before, before the, uh, the log could move. In any case, uh, those are, that's generally a, a pretty, good, pretty good hinge there. We had some decay on this side again. It was on the side closest to the house, uh, which, which was good because we want these fibers to be strong to keep the, the tree from going that way. And it basically came down exactly where I was aiming for. I was counting on aiming there and having the log come down, you know, a foot or two to the left, but it didn't happen that way. So I consider it a very successful fall. Everybody's happy. 
And uh, we got one more to do. Okay, they've asked me to bring the slingshot to set a, uh, a pole line in this, in this second tree. I'm going to use 12 down. Go back probably about 70, 75 feet. Nice. Nice shot. Okay, so we set the pull line with the throw bag. And normally I use a fishing pole technique, but we need as much, as much room in this rope as possible. So I'll just send a running bowling up there. I don't want to make it actually a, a double bone where I double that bite there. You gotta get some tape on this rope, dude. And uh, dress it up. And then this is the Yosemite tie off when you put the end up through there. Of course, it's a lot easier when that end is, end is taped instead of just hanging there loose like that. big a tree. It's plenty tall though. We're going to drop it across this hill and uh, you can see the, the driveway has been dug out of there. So and then it may end up cracking the log. could shatter the log right down the whole center and ruin it for lumber value, but that's really not my concern. I just want to make sure the tree comes down without damaging any of the landscape or, or valuables on the property first. After that, if we get any wood for the, for the mill out of it, this is the plus. Modified open face notch. And modified open face notch, and then uh, which is going to be a little bit over 45 degrees, maybe 55, 60 degrees, and then uh, come in with a uh, back release plunge cut to set up the hinge. All right, we're, we're going to have to move some trucks here before we start this cut. All right, we have a redirect block set on that maple tree in the back. I'm going to I'm going to aim the tree. My my desired direction of fall is going to be about two feet to the left of that block. So somewhere between the maple and the ash. And uh, it's going to, it should hit the hill there. Now Gibb says he's not worried about the damage to the lawn. He's going to fix that all as part of the project here. So I'm just going to, just going to start the cut right now. I show it at 20. So that gunning line is 20.